hey what's happening people welcome or welcome back to to the channel i'm tony and this is the place where we dive in all things photography and gear today we got something really really exciting to share with you the new godax v1 pro and i have the rebranded uh, uh, adorama version the flashpoint the benefit is that if you live in the united states you get the warranty and support uh, via adorama instead of waiting the support directly from godax in china so it's the same flash it has the same like under the the head it has the godax logo it's the same flash just rebranding to have a better support and warranty in the us so let's jump right into it to see what we got. We're gonna do a quick in, uh, unboxing and also we're gonna do some shooting. We're gonna compare the flash, how it stacks against the uh, older V1 and how it uh, stacks against the Profoto ATM because it's still the big uh, competitor. And uh, to see if the new feature are a big improvement from the older version and it's worth the extra money. We're gonna jump in on, on a fast unboxing to see what uh, we get in the box because uh, I saw on the social media many people are claiming that a couple of like some parts are missing uh, from the box and I don't think is the case. So I think it's it's nice packaging, but it comes with uh, instruction. Yes, I'm gonna read them, and um, I think it has a new storage bag. I don't think I like the newer one uh, versus the old uh, storage bag. We're gonna look at it. Uh, the new flash, uh, it comes with uh, a battery. The, what, what I see, the battery is the same shape and you it's interchangeable with the older version. The newer one has an USB-C port so you can charge it directly, which is awesome. And uh, it fits right in. Also in the package, you have an, uh, a brick for the USB-C port charging with a cable, which is nice, but it's another cable I don't need. And uh, the new feature of this flash is the uh, sub-flash. It's a mini flash and attaches uh, in the front of your flash for a filling light. We're gonna go over uh, all this feature later on because I have my uh, thoughts about how it works. If uh, you look at the flash side by side, this is the V1, this is the new um, uh, Pro version. The newer uh, flash is just a tad taller than the older one, I don't know why. Everything else looks the same. I'm looking, uh, is the same uh, plastic used on, on both flashes. The quality of the plastic is absolutely the same. I don't see any difference. Physical differences are the sub uh, mini flash, are the TCM button on the side, so you can uh, adjust, uh, you can switch your uh, uh, TTL exposure to manual right away. The power uh, input in the, in the front, and uh, this is it. And it's just a little bit, uh, you know, increase in, uh, in height, uh, a quarter inch, you know, it's bigger than the older version. Otherwise, you know, everything looks the same. The uh, layout of the buttons in the back is the same. Uh, just uh, the newer uh, flash has the sub menu interface for the um, sub flash which is, you know, I think is a piece of junk. It doesn't do nothing to, to your photography. As you can see from these pictures, you have to be really, really close to your subject to, uh, to make a difference. But besides that, it's a very good flash. I don't try to uh, put them down. I just say that I don't see a huge difference, you know, in the features than the, the older version. And I think, you know, both of them, they are very good flashes, very, very good uh, uh, choice, you know, for everybody who, who needs to start uh, looking in uh, uh, portrait photography and, uh, and lighting for portrait photography. So I think both of them, they are solid choice. I'm gonna take a couple of pictures using the V1 uh, uh, Pro, and uh, we're gonna see how it stacks against the older version, which is a trooper, and also we're gonna, bring in the game the uh, the Profoto, the Profoto um, uh, A10, because it's direct competitor. This is, uh, you know, the most expensive flash right now. And uh, we'll see how it stacks against the old timer and uh, the Profoto. To test this uh, uh, flash, uh, we set up a little shoot here with Leo 
Uh, I have the um, uh, flash mounted on a stand with a pop up 20 uh, inch uh, cell box. I like this system because it has a, a quick release and a magnetic mount. You just put your flash and uh, you secure it in place. Uh, I have it to the side. I, uh, I'm shooting with Canon R5 and a 7200 lens. It's no color shift in the Godox Neon uh, Pro Flash. And I have a hard time to telling all the uh, images apart. And I have to make notes to make sure I know which flash I use for uh, every image. From this testing, I see the Godox Xeon Pro has a very nice balance uh, output. And I have a hard time to tell them apart from uh, the Profoto A10 uh, uh, flash. I can see the little tint on um, Godox V1, the old version, a little bit so, which is very easy to correct. But uh, otherwise, all the flashes uh, perform uh, very, very similar. And with the Godox V1 Pro having the, that green tin um, eliminated, it looks the same as the Profoto A10. It's very impressive and uh, I think uh, it's a very good solid choice uh, if you're looking for a flash. Tonight I'll reach out and touch the sky In the city of angels Feels like I'm coming The new soft flash, everybody make it uh, seems like it's a huge improvement. But uh, testing this flash, I didn't, I don't think it did anything to me. It's like you have to be in very close proximity uh, to your subject to have the flash on camera, and the head gets to be tilted up. You have to bounce the head, you know, the, the light from the ceiling. If you have the the head tilted down, it doesn't. The soft flash doesn't engage. Also, the soft flash doesn't engage when you use it remote, off camera. It doesn't do anything. The soft flash doesn't work in ETTL. And in order to adjust the power output on the soft flash, you have to go in the in the menu and you have to dial down and manually, you know, to adjust the power of, for the intensity you want. Now I find this uh, option uh, not uh, very reliable because if you have your flash on camera, you are in a, a run and gun situation. So you just want to put in, you know, use ETTL and keep shooting, you know, moving. You don't have the time to go in the sub menu and I just, oh, I'm gonna need a little bit more power. So I don't think it works for the purpose. I just is, think it's a gimmick just to make it more, the flash more exciting. So. Personally, I don't think this flash it does anything uh, to me. And uh, how long if you can, you know, if it's off camera and you can use it uh, an ETTL or a high speed sync, it's like it's pretty much useless. It looks good, you know. We we agree that it just gives a little bit uh, more interest to the flash. I think the Godax um, V1 Pro, it's a very good uh, flash. It, the color is uh, well balanced. I think it sucks extremely well for the color, uh, the color balance against the uh, Pro Photo. The older version, the V1, was no slouch. Was just a little bit of a uh, green tint, you know, but was easy to correct. But you are very peculiar about that. The new one is eliminates that uh, tint, and uh, I think right now, you know, like even like the the older version. I think that was going uh, head to head with the uh, Pro Photo, and uh, this one just with the color tint eliminated. I think it's uh, it makes these two flashes, you know, like uh, going uh, head to head. is no difference. It just minimizes the gap, but it's worth it. Uh, the extra money, or it's better to invest in uh, the older V1. Personally, I don't think. It brings enough uh, features to to spend the money. It's like three hundred twenty-five dollars right now on uh, on on sale, and um, the I saw like the V1 is going uh, on sale too for like one ninety-nine. So almost you can buy almost you can buy two older version uh, versus the newer one. So. For me personally, I think buying two Godaxes, the uh, the V1, uh, is better option than to get the the newer version. Of course, if you need that 
a hundred foot plushes, you know, continuous. And if you're an event photographer and you need all that features, just go with the, the newer one. Otherwise, I don't think it's a big difference. And uh, I think the, the older version is still going strong. I like this flash, it worked uh, awesome for me. I use Godox, you know, the older version and the Profoto uh, for uh, last year. And uh, I'm gonna do a video to let you know which was one more reliable flash, the one I use the most. And uh, you'll be surprised. So now I got the newer version of the flash, and also I got the I ordered the nano trigger, but uh, I think it's a, still a couple of weeks away when uh, the, the new trigger are gonna come. I'm gonna uh, test it, and I'm gonna let you know, guys, uh, what I think about uh, the trigger. So my take is the new flash is great. You know, like V1 was great flash, was a great flash. So it was the new one. With the uh, less color tint, I think it makes it a little bit better. But uh, the other fe features as the, the sub flash and the, the power is not something I think it uh, applies for many cases. And I don't know how many photographers you need to use the, the power pack because for me, it's just easier to have the, uh, a couple of extra batteries. And um, that we're gonna simplify, it's easier to carry than a power pack. I have power packs, but you know, I found that uh, very hard to use because you have to lug them around, carrying them around with you. Also, I like the new uh, battery because it has this um, USB-C port and uh, you can uh, recharge it straight in the flash or you know, without uh, using the, uh, the docking station. But you can buy the new battery to use it with the older version, so now we're gonna like if you wanna refresh a little bit your old V1, just get a new battery so you can charge it on the go and uh, uh, it'll be awesome. Oh, I like the new flash. I think it's uh, uh, it has a very good potential. The only feature what I like from the whole new stuff, from the sub uh, uh, flash, from the power pack, from the <laughs> a uh, hundred uh, continuous flashes with our overheating and um, the nine steps um, modern lap uh, uh, adjustment. The only thing what I really like about this uh, new flash is just, you know, it has uh, uh, the, the tint corrected on the lens. That is the only thing what it matters to me. I'm curious what you guys think about the, the new flash. Comment below uh, if you think that the new flash uh, is a better option than the V1 or you can appreciate the newer features or you are like, you don't care and you think that the, uh, all the features what you have right now in V1 is enough for you. I'm really curious how uh, everybody, you know, uh, we're gonna take this new feature and account when we are looking for a new flash. I don't think you go wrong with either one of these flashes. If you choose, I think they are uh, both awesome and uh, I think they're gonna serve you very well. I hope you guys uh, enjoy this video. Please uh, like and subscribe. Check out my channel for more lighting, tutorial, and gear review. And I'll see you next time. Tonight I'll reach out and touch the sky in the city.